all we can all we can tell and all we all we know which we know from experience let's let, just like we mentioned uh, it's been a crazy year um we all thought property price is going to be go down but it never happened it was it was the 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 hardest the hardest uh, i know this one peter Good evening, everybody. Good evening. It's Istvan and Peter here. Hi, Peter. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening everyone. Um, thank you for tuning in. We are here, yeah. as always, uh, every Tuesday night, and we try to share our knowledge or our experience or just try to talk talk about things which will, which will affect us or could affect us. Um, and tonight, we are here again. Good to see you, Istvan. Long time, it's been a while. Yeah, indeed, yes. Um, <laughs> but yes, yeah, like you mentioned, you know, we are always here on Tuesday evenings, 7.30. Uh, we try and talk about all things property. Um, and this evening we're talking about something rather topical as well. Um, so as you may have heard, we got something going on right now, uh, which is called Brexit. Um, so we thought, because it's quite topical, uh, we wanted to have a little chat about what we think is... Um, what we think is uh, sort of relevant in terms of the property market uh, from a Brexit point of view. And um, just have a little recap. I mean, it's coming very close to the end of the year now. Just have a little recap as well in terms of what has happened and how that's impacted the, the property market as well. So I'm going to kick it off, if that's okay, Peter. Um, so as you probably well know, I mean, there's lots going, lots been going on this year. So, um, uh, But I think if you just cast your mind back a little bit to the beginning of this year, I think we all thought that this year was going to be very much uh, sort of centered around Brexit because this was the year where we were all going to uh, have to get a deal done. As Boris said, we have to get a deal done by 31st of December. Um, and this was all sort of kind of how it was shaping up until about February, or March. And of course, we all know that uh, COVID kind of happened and sort of took center stage. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess we've kind of all forgotten about Brexit for a good six months, but uh, there's no really uh, getting around it now. It's happening. Um, the guys are currently talking. I can't even remember where they are. They're in Brussels or in London, but um, they're trying to fresh out a deal. Uh, it's not going very well, or at least that's what we hear. So um, it would be interesting to see where they end up. But um, I guess from our, from our point of view, from the whole country's point of view, you know, the wheels are in motion, you know, Brexit is happening. Uh, there is no denying it, whether it's a deal or no deal, you know, we don't know, obviously, but it's going to have some impact on uh, the UK economy in general. And of course, uh, because of that, it's going to have an impact on the property market as well. So what we thought we we're going to do about this, uh, this, this uh, chat this evening is have a little sort of um, look at some of the factors that actually drive the um, the property market from an economy pers perspective and also have a little look back in terms of what has happened this year in a bit more detail um, and then trying to look ahead of how that's going to impact the property market for the next year so um, I'm going to talk a couple of things first Peter and feel free to pitch in here of course you know we want to have this as, a, as a open of a chat as possible um, but um, there's lots of factors obviously that impact the property market but there's a few that I'd like to point out um, that really have a major impact on it. So one of them is one of them is unemployment, all right? So obviously, if unemployment is high, then less people have enough uh, disposable income, enough income to actually start buying properties. So without the right amount of income, people can't take mortgages out. So obviously, that's going to have an impact on the market in general because that's uh, that means people won't be going out there shopping for houses and this doesn't really drive the demand and therefore doesn't really drive the prices as much. Um, one of the major issues in the last 10 years, well, probably good 10 years ago now when the last crash happened was the availability of credit. So bank, banks had a uh, huge issue with um, uh, obviously lending. Um, the banking crisis was uh, very uh, much around and um, obviously the, that hey, has a huge problem uh, because you know if banks aren't lending, People can't actually afford houses. If you look around how much a house costs these days, and when you buy a house, most people go there and buy a house with 10% of their own money, 
and the rest comes from banks. You know, they could be a little bit higher. Some people go 20, 25%. So the rest of the money has to come from somewhere. So if you think about it, you know, banks aren't able to lend money, then obviously you're going to have a mass major issue because how are you going to come up with the rest of the 80, 90% of the value of the house? Um, so obviously that's a big one. And um, another one is interest rates. Now, for most people who um, sort of only entered the property market, whether they're buying for themselves or buying as an uh, investment property, the last in the last 10 years, people have got very used to the fact that the interest rates have been really, really low. Now, it's not always been the case. And certainly in the past, high interest rates have um, made purchasing your home um, a much more difficult job. So we not really had that in the last 10 years. Um, Bank, of uh, Bank of England haven't, has not been able to erase the interest rates because um, the economy is not really been growing at that sort of rate. So one of the Bank of England's tool or lever, as a wish, if you wish, is to actually either raise or lower interest rates, whether they want to stimulate the economy, which uh, when they lower the interest rates, they're sim stimulating the economy, which means that uh, there's a more uh, flow of the money, easier flow of money around the economy. So if that happens, um, then it tends to um, help people. So if you take out a mortgage, for example, in the current um, uh, times, you know, if, you, if it's a residential mortgage, you get something like maybe one and a half percent interest. Um, but if you were to take out, let's say back in 2006, you probably got yourself something like a 9% interest rate. So it's a huge difference between that, obviously, when, it's, when it comes to repayment. So affordability of mortgages is, is very, uh, very much dictated by interest rates. So, yeah, so those are the, the few things um, that I wanted to pull out. Is there anything you want to add to that, Peter? Anything that you've, from your experience, anything else that can impact the market? Yeah, of course. Uh, what you're saying is, is absolutely true. Um, this is um, this is the situation when when and a lot of things can impact um, impact the property market and um, and as you said uh, well um, economy economy and certain factors in, in economy play a huge part and uh, whether obviously if you want to go um, with the interest um, get back to the interest part what you mentioned of course if the interest high it's it can be can be beneficial for people who who parking the money in a bank bank let's say um, if the interest is low it's let's say beneficial for people who want to buy uh, buy uh, properties but it's not beneficial for people who who, who let's say um, wanna uh, wanna park the money in a, a bank so bank so everything has a good and a bad part but in this case uh, in this Brexit case there are a lot of other factors uh, can be considered as well. Um, obviously, obviously, the um, the economy, the economy, and certain parts of the economy is is, is going to be affected. So, if people cannot, um, uh, if there is a huge unemployment, like like you said, obviously, they're not going to be able to afford mortgages. So, the demand is going to be fall, fell, and and that's going to be that's going to impact uh, impact the uh, the property market um there are also other many factors can impact as well let's say uh, maybe it's going to be less um less if you're talking about let's say let going to come less um students um um to the market from from abroad let's say uh, it could be, could affect the hmo market um yeah. and and also and also there are there are a lot of a lot of other things as well uh, to be considered and um it's very hard to say very hard to say what exactly going to happen and and how is going to happen but but definitely uh, definitely um we need to we need to be really really careful i don't think so uh, at this point um we gonna the the how the property market is going to be crashed uh, the reason i don't think because all the government schemes um which which the furlough um the furlough system and um, and also the uh, the uh, stamp duty holiday and all this and all these kind of um, schemes helping people, um, first first time buyers, investors helping people to buy properties. So they try to keep the demand uh, higher. And as long as the demand is high, um, obviously the, the price is not going to be dropped dropped either. And I think I, I'm not too sure um, the schemes going running 
till end of March, maybe 2021. Um, so I definitely don't expect uh, a very, very, very big job until then. Uh, after, uh, I don't know, no, nobody, I don't think so, anybody knows what's going to happen. Uh, but definitely until this comes in, in place, uh, I don't expect any 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 huge negative impact after if all these uh, things running um, running out. And of course, whether it's going to be deal or whether it's going to be no deal or what deal is going to be. Um, if if there is no deal, let's say I, I can I still can imagine if there is not going to be any deal. But let's say if there was no deal, mm -hmm. of course that could impact uh, the prices as well. Uh, food prices and any and anything, uh, all the prices, so the living prices would, would increase. Um, of uh, different uh, different tariffs um, would would rise rise um, for products and goods uh, going travel between the two country, um, and that could impact as well uh, negatively. And once all these games running out, uh, and if ne this negative impact is gonna be is gonna be um, is gonna be in, then then it could affect the property market after, uh, and could come down and go down. But I don't think so at this point. I think what the government try to do is keep the interest and keep the demand um, the high as much as possible, uh, and I think that's gonna be that's gonna be drive um, and keep the property market up. That that's my that's my take on this. Yeah, I think it's a it's a fair point. Um, I think I'll, I'm just going to go back a little bit in time. I think you, you've sort of zoomed ahead a little bit in terms of um, predicting what, what's going to happen. I think there was a few things that we perhaps can take out from what happened in the last few years as well. So um, uh, I had a quick look at this the last few days just because I'm really interested to see uh, whether there was actually any impact of the um, the referendum back in 2016. And it looks that it was not really a huge deal. So uh, in terms of you know pro house prices, there's there seems to be a bit of a, a pattern in each year. So uh, we come out of December, you know January, when everyone's not really moving a huge deal. You know property sort of sales and uh, transaction numbers are tend to be quite um, sort of subdued uh, because no one really wants to move around Christmas or, or not many people anyway. Um, and then come springtime, there's a little bit of an uptick in terms of prices. You know the market becomes a bit more buoyant. Um, people are actually happier, you know, the sun comes out, it's just a, a better time and obviously it drives prices up a little bit. So you see that increase in prices around the springtime and then that sort of carries through towards the end of the year. Now that's sort of sort of pattern that repeats on a yearly basis or more or less repeats. So um, and basically that's really carried through in sort of 2016, 2017, but apparently around 2018, 19, the prices have started to drop a little bit because um, that's when the actual Brexit um, negotiations have really started to kick in. You know, the, uh, the how are we going to leave? Uh, what sort of deal are we going to get in terms of the divorce set, uh, divorce deal? So that's when things have really started to happen. So I found I thought it was quite interesting that that's actually impacted the um, the prices. Now things have picked up a little bit around the election last year, and. Perhaps there was just a, a bit of extra optimism that, you know, the Tories will uh, have the extra um, power, the need in terms of making sure everything can be carried through the way, um, I guess, people want them to do. Now, I don't think anybody has <laughs> in any shape or form predicted, you know, that COVID is going to get throw the spanner in the works massively t this year. So I think that obviously has uh, impacted how that's uh, how the plan of the Tories and everybody else around the whole Brexit negotiations have planned out, penned out. Um, so but that's another another matter. But interestingly, um, so like I say, the, the pattern is kind of similar year on year, and then now we're getting into this year. But this year, is, you know, all the patterns that you you know of, they're just completely gone because obviously you lock down the country for a few months in the in the beginning of the year when. Normally, the prices tend to sort of go up. But of course, all that gets released around, when did we come out of lockdown? Was that June-ish, July? Yeah. So then, of course, everything sort of got pushed back. And after July, everything's been riding on this huge wave of um, demand that got built up over lockdown. So of course, now we're still seeing, I think, prices increasing in certain areas of country. So very difficult to predict based on what happened this year in terms of how that's going to go next year. But I think... What you mentioned was really key is there's a lot of good things that are out in the market right now 
that um, that will probably continue to carry things through. You know, so there's obviously you mentioned the, the stamp duty holiday, so that's gonna currently looks like it's ending on the 21st of March. Sorry, yeah, March 21. Sorry, um, and also the furlough has also been extended. So both of those are huge positives for the property market, right? So the stamp duty holiday, you know, people who are buying their own homes up to the value of half a million, which is quite quite um, you know quite a substantial value, they don't have to pay stamp duty. Obviously, investors are not included in this because you know they fall into a slightly different category. But for anyone who wants to move, um, that's that's a very very big incentive. You know, so you can save yourself over ten grand if you if your ha house value is high enough. Um, and like you say, the furlough has also been extended. So that's a huge plus because one of the biggest risks, as I mentioned earlier, is unemployment. So with the furlough being extended until March, that whole unemployment snowball, if you wish, has just been rolled a little bit further down because I'm not sure that's really going to stop unless they extend it again or they come up with a different scheme. But the way the economy currently is, it's I find it very difficult to see how we can carry on with furlough and not actually have the unemployment um, rise. I mean, it's been an all-time low for a couple of years. So... I think for a, for unemployment to rise, it's almost a natural thing at some point. But right now, with what's going on um, in terms of COVID, and of course, we don't know how Brexit is going to impact because, like you just mentioned, you know, imposing tariffs on certain parts of the economy, certain products and services. I mean, I don't know what sort of tariffs they are, to be perfectly honest with you, but any more than what um, a business can handle is going to push their business over the edge, which means that they no longer can afford it. So it's a very tricky situation. But um, absolutely. absolutely, absolutely. And and also good evening. Um, Can't see who you are, but good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, and also don't forget, I wouldn't want to go into into details about Brexit and whether it was a good decision or bad decision or anything like that, because that's not the purpose of the tonight uh, tonight talk. Um, but from what we heard during the last couple of years, um, what we heard, the government own analysis, which they which they took, their own own people predicted um, on a normal. There was no COVID on that time. Um, with Brexit, even with that deal, it's going to be the economy, the Britain, the uh, the UK economy is going to be three or four percent uh, worst. Uh, then it would have been uh, been part of the uh, EU, and and that's all, all, all. Again, if there is no deal, it's going to be even. I don't know how much was it in the next couple of years, five or ten years, but was predicted maybe ten or over ten percent worse. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to get into the exact details, but definitely uh, their own assessment uh, was it's going to be better. It's going to be worse uh, by a few percentage. So obviously, COVID just made the situation worst. So if we take all these things account, and just like you mentioned, uh, the furloughs came and, and and you know, it's like a snowball just going and going. And at some point it has to stop, has to be stopped uh, because there is no, there is no way uh, it can be ex keep extended and keep extended. So at some point it's going to be stopped. And that's, that's the point when all these things are going to be stopped. That's the point, and especially the Brexit as well, uh, then everything in the same time, and I, I believe um, everybody is is so everybody worried about this uh, this situation if it's going to happen. So if everything is stopped and happening in the same time, almost same time, and that would hit the economy uh, hardly, that could impact the uh, the property market. Um, but I think I still think and I still feel um, government would. Uh, would do anything, anything they can to save the property market and the economy. So, so we, we, what we can do is just, uh, just think and feel. Uh, it's gonna be, it's not gonna be the huge impact. I mean, negative impact. Just like we thought uh, this year during this year after we came, we, we came out from the first lockdown. Everybody told, oh, it's gonna be now. It's gonna be the best for property investors. We're gonna literally buy properties with 20, 30 percent discount because everybody wants to sell, and there's nothing happened like that. So it was exactly the opposite. We all know uh, it's been crazy. Um, we we really really struggling. We was doing we struggling to find properties. 
um, but by the time I put uh, put be put or offer, uh, other 10, 15 people put offer as well, and and not just the asking price, but even above asking prices. So it's honestly it was crazy, and it's still crazy, and it's still going on. So you know, but do you? Know you <laughs> but do you think do you think that that's gonna have to stop? Like you said, you know that that snowball or that can being kicked down the road, because you know everybody thought that around October. November, December, with the furloughs stopping around October, things will start to get a bit different. Um, now that's not happened, and it's not really going to happen until March because obviously everything's been extended until March. Now, I don't think that the you know the powers to be a government would like a cliff edge sort of scenario in March. So, yeah. if you know, judging by what happened this year, but to be honest, I, I think they may do something again. I just don't know how much longer we can keep doing what we're doing because obviously this is there's no money tree. Now I know we can print money, but still <laughs> that's all that's doing is just you know fueling inflation. And of course, you know, at some point the money that we're pouring into the economy like this is gonna have to be covered from somewhere. So I think we're in for an interesting year, but I do agree. I think initially I don't see any issue, definitely not until March, April, May, perhaps even. Uh, I think the wave that we created this year with all this, uh, all these incentives is going to carry through at least until March, so probably even mid-year to the year uh, next year. I think after that, we almost did a little bit of a anyone's guess um, <laughs> in a way, but yeah. I, do, I do believe there's a lot of good things out there. You know, so for example, the low interest rates, I don't see that changing. So you know, that's still going to be out there. Um, Banks have probably still got the money. They haven't got the liquidity crisis that they had back in 10 years ago. So there's still money out there. Um, the other thing that's good to know, note is the help to buy scheme is still available to people. So first time buyers will still be out there, be able to get um, help from the government through the help to buy scheme. So there's lots of good news out there that still I think could, could easily push uh, or carry this momentum through until easily into the second part of next year. So I think if I was to, to sort of put a little bit of um, prediction on this, because it's very difficult to do, obviously, without knowing whether we will have a deal or not have a deal. Um, but I would say, yeah, I think the first half of next year, I think we'll probably be OK. Uh, second part of next year is going to have to start. Uh, we're going to have to start looking at how and what sort of things um, the government will come out with. And see how that um, see how that will change the the whole outlook. Because right now, let's face it, just um, before the second lockdown it was the end of October, everybody thought that this was going to be it. Um, and then another lockdown, extension of this, extension of that. And all of a sudden, within a couple of days, everything just changed. So it is very difficult to uh, <laughs> to really have. I think I need to grab my crystal ball out from, from somewhere. I think I need to have a look at that. Um, but, yeah, so I think good news, plenty of good news, plenty of bad news out there. Um, very, um, very much uh, resting on what the decision will be through these guys in the next couple of days. Um, and then and then we'll be much wiser, I think. That's, that's my view on this one, Peter. Anything that you've got to do? No, absolutely. Obviously, we are not we are not here um, to, to tell the, the truth. I mean, we try to tell the truth, but we obviously we can't predict the the future. So, so um, we, need to, we need to give Boris a call, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, all, all, all we can all we can tell and all we all we know, which we know from experience. Let's let, just like we mentioned, uh, it's been a crazy year. Um, we all thought property price is going to be go down but it never happened it was it was the 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 hardest the hardest That's i know this one peter uh, anything that you've got to just oh sorry no oh, I'll I'll sorry. Uh, it's, yeah it's all good <laughs> all good now yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> no, it's, no, it's, so yeah, uh, we all thought it's gonna be very hard and let's see see what happened so that's why we can't believe but all we can do is tell what we feel what we learn from from experience, I definitely agree with you because I've been through uh, in a different country when um, when um, the the first 2007 eight when was the 
yeah. the big crash, economic crash. I, I was certainly part of it, and I had business uh, on that time, and I certainly felt it. And the bank ball was the, all the banks in the, and they was literally struggling uh, to give money, or they just pretended to be struggling. But there was no mortgage, there was no available help. So I think that crash at, at the moment uh, that was bigger and and worst. Um, I what I see from this year. I, I absolutely agree with you. They're not going to let just crash um, uh, the whole economy. They're going to always do something to, to keep the moment up and then uh, and carrying through. Um, that's why I wouldn't say it's going to be it's going to be economic crash, especially because I still don't think I still don't think uh, there is such a thing like no deal. I might be wrong. I might be wrong, but uh, to be honest, I never believed it. I never believed it. it it's all about mm -hmm. it's all about negotiating, um, negotiating uh, each other, and uh, who is going to be blind, uh, who is going to be um, uh, give up first. Let's say, um, you know, uh, so, yeah. So that that is all about. I don't think so. They really, really want uh, go on go to that road. Then there is no deal, or even if there was no there was no deal, I am sure that they would. Uh, they would made some certain arrangements uh, between each between themselves. So I, I never believed uh, this is a this is a actual possibility. They gonna just go and split uh, completely. Uh, I, I can't believe it because there's a huge and a huge impact on both uh, both parts. So I don't think so. That would be the um, that would be the aim. Um, this is just more than more than is who's gonna. You like a bluff, like like playing poker. Yeah, the bit of, bit of poker going on for sure. Yes, absolutely. yeah, yeah. That, that, that's this all about uh, very but, high, high stakes poker. Yeah, exactly. Very very high. <laughs> stakes. Okay, but but that, um, so so my opinion, uh, they could have used this so much energy and so much money. They could have used to something else. Uh, if if I if I might say my opinion, they could have used could have saved the whole world uh, for this energy day and efforts they put. Put into the whole things in the last couple of years, and all the money they burned, uh, they could have put to save the whole whole world. Um, instead of they still they still carrying and fighting with each other. If there was something good, I'm sorry. If there was something good in COVID, that's only one thing. Uh, they uh, they took uh, everything from this Brexit talks and this negotiation because I believe a lot of people was uh, was just just you know um, it was too much. Um, and keep keep hearing this on, on a daily basis. So I will be really, really pleased that it's all going to be going to be over. And they made a deal, whatever his deal is going to be, and just let's forget about it and and just get let's move and everybody keep carrying on with the life. Hopefully, uh, COVID situation is going to be solved as well. Because don't forget, um, if COVID is going to be solved and is disappearing from the market, that is that going to be a very 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 good impact on the, on the economy. Just like it has a bad impact on the economy, that's going to be a very, very good one. Uh, if if uh, all of a sudden everything is going to be solved, it not not maybe all of a sudden, but slowly, slowly, uh, things go back to normal. That will help. That will help hugely. Or not just the UK economy and the whole world economy. And and because don't forget, um, UK economy uh, is also depend on other economies as well, or the big economies as well. Um, the U.S., the Chinese economy, so the, all these big economies is, is certainly depends on each other. So, um, so there's a lot of other factors outside of UK which will affect the whole things. So, if COVID is goes away, that that will help everybody. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Right. Um, what do you guys think? What's your view on this? By the way, is there anyone got anything that you want to share? Um, what's your view on how? the uh, Brexit is going to impact the property market. Um, we kind of shared a few things in terms of how we see what we think is actually really impacting the market, and what certainly has over the last year, um, and certainly what's been keeping it up. Uh, because a lot of people, like you said earlier, Peter, a lot of people thought it's gonna crash, uh, sort of second part of this year, this year which didn't happen uh, for a variety of reasons we just mentioned. So if there's anything you guys think that, um, it really is a, a driving force behind what's going to happen next year uh, from a Brexit point of view. Please let us know. Uh, we would love to hear your thoughts. Um, but otherwise, that is it for us for today, I think. Um, so thanks for joining us. Uh, really good to see you as always, guys. Uh, and uh, we shall see you next week. Thank, Thank you. you Bye. Bye.